Hey everybody, welcome to our YouTube stream that we open up to the public every single Wednesday. Thanks for joining us this morning. This is Spartan speaking, by the way. Just going to give you guys a little bit of a breakdown on what's going to happen this morning. Once I'm done speaking here, Beth's going to come on, give you a breakdown of the macro environment, any news events that happen over the course of the evening, as well as go through any of the bigger picture items. Um, or ETFs that make sense to be looking at for today. Once that's done, I'm going to come on. We'll go through the names that are gapping up, gapping down that I'm looking at. We'll go through those names from a technical standpoint. We'll talk about the news on them as well. We'll also go through the SPY, the FANG, the uh, Qs, VIX, and IWM to get a good sense of what's going on in all the indices, et cetera. After that, South Beach will come on, go through the macro uh, environment from his perspective, any analyst calls he's looking at for today, as well as individual names. And then we'll do a quick little recap of those names that I talked about uh, this morning, and we'll be ready for the open. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass over to Beth, and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Beth, if you're ready, all yours. I'm indeed, so Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my friends. Welcome. Be market here at SpartanTrading.com. This is what we do every day. The market's open. And on Wednesdays, we share it with the world. I got to I mean, I'm just looking at stuff. I said, oh, my God. That's all I can say. Um, anyways, um, let's just keep going at it, right? Uh, yesterday, after Microsoft earnings, and I saw it down so much, I just left. So I said, oh, okay, I'm going to go exercise, and then I'm going to have my Stella. Okay, so it's been a long week for me. And then I come back, and I look at it. <laughs> I looked at everything up, and I said, I thought this was a prank or something. Anyways, it's a, it's a wondrous job we have. I love what we do. Okay, let's get to it. If I'm saying, you know, if, if twins and I were literally in the same trading room, okay, he and I would, on Monday, we kind of looked at each other and I, we said, that's the low. That's what we said to each other. And it's funny because it's, we have a lot more to go, right? I mean, we have basing, we have all kinds of stuff, but it's kind of nice to have at least a floor in place for us, right? Okay, what do we got? Not a whole hell of a lot in terms of uh, on the economic side, right? Um, well, we, we do have retail inventories. So some of this, the question is, and this is kind of getting to what, I hate to say this, uh, Kathy Woods was pounding the table about, and she was basically saying that it was inventory buildup going on in terms of a lot of this stuff and that things are not as well off as we think they are. Now this is potentially possible, but I mean, we, we, we still have crazy ass supply chain disruption. And I think what she's not factoring in is the commodity super cycle I keep talking about, pounding the table about. And it's this is what it looks like, friends, with oil, all that stuff. Let's see what's going on here in terms of, all right, so a couple of days ago I said, Mattel, something's going on here. So, uh, signal rating, Chris. What do I? What am I expecting today? I would have, to be honest with you, I would really have loved a rate hike um, today. But I'll accept if they basically do a little bit more aggressive tapering. How's that sound? We also have to. We'll look at uh, in detail what I'm. 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 I'm look. We'll look at once stuff comes out. Um, this is good news for tell. This is you know okay whatever. So this is interesting. Uh, uh, Russia is not quite there in terms of their sanction proof. I don't know. That's what it looks like right there. Okay, Barons, what is he talking about? Ami Pukan boom is coming. Where is that the wild card? Stocks, supplier delivers, Tesla, yada, 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 yada. All right, let's go. Inflation supply chain Omicron is going to take a bigger toll. This is really, um, Fascinating. And the reason why is because um, Delta didn't do what Omicron's doing, right? And Omicron should have been, it was later in the cycle, and this is how you get to herd immunity, yada, 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 global immunity. But Delta kind of put everybody, it, it put the, the cycle off, and I would have loved to have seen Omicron instead of Delta, but obviously it would have been Delta, not, well, anyways. So, reason being, so many people are infected. Statistically, right, it's so much larger, and that basically impacts so many things. Right? And I'll, I'll tell you, this inflation business, they're getting it so wrong, so wrong on this one. Okay, chip shortage. 
you're talking about 40 day supply companies had a 40 this they're talking days on this thing they are saying that it's less than five days of inventory now are you hearing this for key chips five less than five days what uh, anyways fidel and start your bets on the electric bar i'll say what our gal eunice is up to this is actually important because um she's doing a purge okay so um He's kicking out peeps. Okay, on the local government side, right? And these are people who have investments. This is really important stuff. It is also pretty dangerous going forward. Liz, okay, Liz, this is what I wanted to see. What kind of drawdowns were we seeing? Okay, largest drawdown since April, 2020, right? This is the current drawdown. Growth, this is it. I mean, this is what it looks like, friends. People getting their hands smacked big time. Now, <laughs> see, we started to see it on Monday, right? You saw a little bit yesterday, but Monday was really quite telling because they were coming out of the woodwork, uh, institutional size hedges putting on. Normally, I would say that's the retail side making the low, but in this time, it was actually institutions that were saying, oh, let a low. But look at all these drawdowns. Wow. All right. Fed tracker, let's do it. Wall Street Journal has this fascinating um, embed. And basically what it does is it instantaneously replaces the old, which is the red and crossed out with the new. So we get a sense of what's going on there. What are they looking at? You know it, PCE. Now this is fascinating because to be honest with you, they, were said it, they did say they were gonna let it go higher and it is between two and a half and three on the monthly, 12 month, yearly, okay? This is November. We don't have the December data yet. So we'll see how that plays out, right? Uh, I guess there's a problem with it. Anyways, uh, if you go to CME Group, they basically have an interesting countdown. They probably don't have their like up to date stuff. Anyways, it will. What what are we looking for? Dot plot to see whether it's shifted closer and more hikes. So those are the two things we really have to look at. And probably that's the most important. Well, the, the tapering increasing more aggressively, and number two, what the dot plot looks like. So that's your read, that's your roadmap to today this afternoon. All right, let's do it. This is really interesting. Okay, assess, assessing the big picture, and you know me, I'm all about that commodities versus stock. This should not surprise anyone. But. <coughs> I think it's going to curl up here, right? Each five-year relative strength chart below <clears throat> looks at a lot of different stuff, right? So this is the DBC, right? That's the commodity index versus the SPY. Look what's going on here. It's going higher. Value versus growth. This is really interesting because it's not what you would expect, right? And we may be getting a meaningful low. If not, we got this double bottom right there, okay? Here's, this is velocity, right? This is velocity against, what is this? Um, VTV against VUG, okay? Which is kind of interesting, growth versus, this is bear market stuff. Oh, here it is, volatility versus momentum. This is interesting too, right? So volatility is picking up against momentum. Energy versus total stock market. This is not your imagination, guys and gals. You can go back. This is this is just the beginning. It's a five-year cycle. It started in 2020. It's going to keep going. I'm looking probably, I think this could be a 10-year cycle. Same. Why? We've never had quantitative easing globally like this. Growth, I mean, it's crazy. Here's energy, right? Against clean energy, right? <laughs> Guess what? Well, don't forget though, I mean, we've seen a lot of these energy companies, right? They're starting to be a little bit more green by um, uh, spending as well as acquisition. So a lot of these companies, excluding the US, right? Because of the um, pensions and stuff like that, they have to have a certain amount of uh, carbon neutral on their books in order for them to be an investment vehicle. We've talked about this in the past, right? And you know that would be a look at OIH because that's the one in, uh, as well as XOP in terms of uh, impact. So I'm just saying, 
Anyway, short-term bonds versus long-term bonds. And small cap versus large cap growth. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's breaking out here, folks. I mean, my narrative is the market's going higher. So what do we got? Yes, second year's record low, new lows, that's hedging activity spikes. Yeah, that's how you get a low. <laughs> and what happened after that? Well, the market ripped your face off. What does it mean? Bullish. Two weeks, one month, two months. I love what we do statistically. All right. So if you look at it from a commodity point of view, and you know, this is my background, right? You want to buy when nobody wants to buy and you want to sell when nobody wants to sell. If the only reason why things are being sold is because of margins or whatever, margin calls and yada, 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 okay? And the company sound, the company makes money. Microsoft, even Netflix, come on. So it's not going to be as much. You just basically got it. Anyways, I digress. A surge in hedging activity. Look at this, look at this. It outpaced Delta, the uh, COVID, it outpaced that 2018. Look at this. What does that mean? Polish. What does it say? Put buying. Now this is interesting. Okay, so this wasn't as aggressive as I thought, but this is small trade, right? Bullish. Put call ratio, bullish. <laughs> Robo put call it ratio, crowning bottom, gamma, bullish, bullish, bullish. This is statistically, look at this. 91, 97, 100%, 100%, come on. There's nothing to fear except fear itself. And I'm gonna share this afternoon with my, uh, my peeps in my uh, class, all the 2024 <laughs> trades I put on my portfolio. Because to me, it was a buying opportunity. It is a buying opportunity. We'll call it an oscillator. It looks like it's going to bounce. We're waiting patiently for that, right? Let's take a look at bonds because we have Fed, FOMC. Well, really not a lot to be, you know, it's not outrageous. It's kind of in the mid on a lot of these things, right? Let's take a look at uh, overseas. Australia should bounce. Canada looks like it's rolling over a little bit here. We were stronger. Brazil, the top dog. Yeah. Emerging markets pulling back a little bit, France, China. This is really interesting because it does have to come back, China, a little bit. Uh, Germany's pulled back. I love India, Italy, Mexico, Russia, Japan. All these have potential for bounce, right? But what's, what's notable about this overseas, right, is we, we always seeing that money is going overseas and we're seeing that it's not taking out, it's not doing what the US has been doing in terms of some of the loans. Okay. Fun clues out of the spy, out of the IWM, out of the SMH. Where to go? You got it, Qs in HYG. Now, this, this is going to be fascinating <clears throat> because of the fact how that HYG goes. <clears throat> I don't trade it. All right. So, what do we got here? Denmark's at four. XLC's at four. It, it's bouncing. Qs are at four. I, this is where we were. Well, this was where we were basically with COVID, right? February, March, this is what it looked like. It also looked like this with, um, you know, 2018. The sky was falling, right? It's not falling. This is a crazy ass breath. This is so bullish. All right, let's see what our peeps are up to today in terms of earnings, right? Got a lot of surprises, right? Downgrades are not uh, the glowing guidance ain't a good thing, right? Look at Kimberly Card. This is shameful. This is, you know, there's so many other that are doing so well. They're just not passing on their price increases and stuff. So, anyways. Nobody raised in this market, I guess just maintaining is pretty good, right? Anyways. Let's see what's going on here. So this is the theme, right? Uh, buybacks. Okay, use buybacks and, and I guess acquisitions, right? All right, let's see what we got going on here. Texas Instruments got an upgrade, right? I started. Um, I don't have a lot though in terms of uh, analyst success rate. Right? So normally it's 70% and above. So the only one who's got it is, is Perito. 
Anders, 100%, I, he maybe just started, I don't know. He upgraded this ATLKY. Right. Logitech got it. Oh. All right, let's take a look at it. This is year to date. What do you, th what do you think? We're going 120% down? I mean, this, in one month's time, the market is taking care of any flock that was gutted, shot, toed, feathered, a lot of these companies. Consumer discretionary, technology. That's all I have to say, right? And energy is kicking ass. I can see it being up again, 30, 40% the XLE this year for years to come. I know I'm saying it, right? Shouting out. And what are our friends doing over at uh, Meme, Wall Street Bets, Peeps, Tesla, the buy and enter the earnings, 22.8. Apple's 50-50, NVIDIA a little bit more. Nice. I don't have any hedges on NVIDIA, but I do have a little bit of socks though. AMD's getting a lot of love. Stock flying. This is kind of nice to see. It was above the average, way below on the option side. Way below. Okay, so that's the theme that we've been seeing on that one. All right, let's do it here. Apple, American Express, Chevron, Halliburton Hope. This was yesterday. They were buying calls on this one. Microsoft, Visa, VIRT, Walls, Fargo. Flo, what was Flo doing? This is not accurate because it wasn't up until 12 o'clock. So Microsoft, have faith, right? Spike, you do, and video, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's do it. We'll quickly go through the stock bonds. Okay, this is the two five. Here's my five year. No, I don't have it. Okay, here's the 10 year. You can see that falling back below. Let's pull up the five year because that's the one that matters, right? And as you can see here, it actually is holding this extension. So we're basically at the mid, right? It's 50%. We're at the mid of this box as well. All right, let's take a peek quickly at China. They actually, that's interesting. So the 78.6% is reclaimed. Huh? Interesting. Here's Germany, right? Let's take a look at the dollar, left them there. Today, we should get a decision on that. Chinese new one, this is fascinating. They're actually strengthening it. Like cryptos, I don't care. <laughs> Just don't care. Commodities, you know I care. Right? Oil, 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 all over the place, right? All right, CRB, it's a breakout. Next leg upcoming. All I have to do is do this. This is this is just this is my uh, Super Bowl when the commodities do this stuff, right? Natural gas, I don't care. It's gonna bounce here, but it's a huge range. I mean, what are you gonna do? There's no uh, good risk reward setup. Okay, all right, okay, take a deep breath. Every 8541 is the pivot on the monthly, and it is above it. Super cool. What's that mean? Next like upcoming. Where's are we going? We're probably going up to uh, one, above 100 on that, okay? XLE, let's take a pause, peek. It's breaking out, right? This is a monthly chart, friends. All right, so the real key pivot is right here. Right? You can see that, the 78.6%. Uh, 67.38, that's the key pivot that we have to break, okay? And then this is just starting. I cannot impress upon you enough that this is just starting. Look at this multi-month, multi-year sideways consolidation. Okay. okay. This goes back to 2015. What do I say? Five to 10 years, right? See you later, alligator. All right, so this is why you want to be, you don't want to be in the physical right now. This is something that people really don't understand. The reason being is that these prices on the physical, it's not being reflected right now downstream in terms of the refiners. Their balance sheets will be a hell of a lot better. They're gonna show stronger earnings, yada, yada, yada. It's not priced in yet. And this is why, I know, I'm shouting it out here. We're going up to here, All right? Now, for those of you who really wanna know what that means, in terms of on the energy side, you know, go big or go home, right? This is what it looks like. 14% outperformance on the energy names. Slumberger, this is the one I'm in. It's breaking out on the monthly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually got in it back here. So this has been a swing that we've been in for a while now. So we'll see how this plays out. I did add some um, short-term uh, Delta trade on and, you know, on the breakout. Makes sense, right? Uh, and then here's gold crude. Gold looks like it's about to break down. I don't think it will, though. We'll see what the uh, FOMC does. It has not broken up. I did get out of the physical gold GLD. 
yesterday and I'll probably put it back on. I wanna see what the flows look like on that. All right, let's get into it on the indice size. This is the um, super trend. This is a new function that they have on trading you. I know, I know a lot of you like to look at it. I only, I'm only looking at it on the uh, weekly and the monthly. The daily is really not, doesn't interest me, okay? So let's see what happens with that, whether it reclaims or not. Here's the DAX, hasn't broken out yet. Here's Fez, reclaiming support. EFA bounced off the 23.6%. Now, a lot of these bounced off the 23.6%. Friends, that's incredibly bullish on a monthly, okay? The shallower the pullback, which would be the 23.6% fib, bouncing off of that is incredibly bullish. Let's see if it holds. FXI monthly still in the inside consolidation. We don't have anything in there. KWIP still holding the double bottom there on the monthly. EEM double bottom on the monthly, hasn't broken the downtrend line. CQQQ double bottom on the monthly, has not broken the downtrend line. QQQ, CQQ trying to reclaim. This is gonna be really fascinating, friends. Just saying. That's gonna be a fun one. VXN, you got it coming back in. That's what we wanna see. VIX is what we're seeing. So this is really interesting because the VIX has been outperforming uh, on the upside, All right? And you can see here the VIX. Actually, it's weakening against the VXN. So that means that there's still some hedging going on in the NASDAQ. FANG bounced right off. The double, triple, it is now a quadruple bottom on the monthly. The sky did not fall. Growth value, I don't care. I just don't. Now this I do care. Spy growth value. Bouncing right here, love it. Okay, spy QQQ, spy's been kicking ass, but QQQ says back off. Look at this, triple top. Let's see if you can roll over. Risk reward is now on the downside. That means the QQQ should bounce. Microsoft, let's do it. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at that. Last time this happened, 33% on the downside. This is 21%. What happened to it? Went up 75%. What I mean by last time this happened, what I mean is it was at the bottom end of the Bollinger. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, two standard deviations up, two standard down. That's what it looks like. And Microsoft rallied for 22 months, weeks, sorry. Okay, just saying. I don't know, but it's kind of fun, right? It's got a triple bottom now down there. As long as that holds, let's do it. Fang Microsoft, Fang is in, hmm, this is interesting. This is really interesting. Saying that maybe Fang is gonna reclaim some of its glory. Microsoft against Apple has been weakening, but look at this, going back to 2017, okay? It's all bouncing off of a key support level. This is why I look at monthlies. My time is up, I'll wait for Spartan to come on and let me know. Microsoft XLK, Microsoft was weakening against XLK. Reversion to the mean, extension, and bouncing off it. Wow. This is crazy. Microsoft against SPY, weakening. I don't have really, well, I got this pivot right here, right? It's on the monthly. There you go. Guess what? It held. One, two, three, quadruple bottom now on the monthly. This is crazy. Microsoft oil call, double top on Microsoft, pulled back, reversion to the mean. I don't know where this is going, but it's at the mid. All right, CRM against Microsoft. CRM has been weakening, but it's got a high PE multiple against Microsoft. So stand back, but we are at a key extension. Okay, on the monthly, that goes back to 2017. Amaj, I'm doing all this stuff for my friend Mav. So you can see it, Microsoft against Intuit. Microsoft's starting to kick some butt, but it is into resistance. I don't know if that goes any higher. Okay, seasonal edge. This is semis, let's talk. February, January but February is a kick-ass month, okay, for the semis. Just saying, February, March, April, socks. Taiwan Semi, NVIDIA, AMD, ABGO, not Intel, Qualcomm, Micron, Texas Instruments, AMAT, LAM Research, ADI, Marvell, eh, Clack, Xilinx. Just say, let's do it. SMH, okay, another one, shallow pullback, right? 23.6% fib on the monthly. Can't get more excited than that. See if it bounces, sucks. It had nowhere, but let, it's trying to reclaim this, right? Don't forget that it socks is US, right? SMH is Taiwan Semi. Socks 
against SMH. So double tap here. So what is this telling me? This is telling me, right, that perhaps, because Sachs has been outperforming SMH. But maybe it rolls over here, Sachs. I don't know, this is interesting. So that would be like Taiwan Semi, Taiwan Semi. No damage done here. But that's a crazy ass candle on the monthly, right? <sighs> Still holding this up trend line, but wow. NVIDIA Taiwan Semi, another interesting thing. <laughs> Mav, this is saying that NVIDIA now is gonna outperform Taiwan Semi. As long as this holds here, this pivot and the reversion of the mean, this tells me NVIDIA is gonna get its little jiggy going on. AMD saw Taiwan Semi. I don't like this one at all. I mean, I don't play that one. Micron, look at you, held the extension on the monthly. Looking pretty good, right? Intel, monthly. Uh, this is a work in progress. And I do think that, you know, Satrini was talking about this. I do think that you know, it goes higher, right? AMD, I don't like this one, but it is holding this extent, this uh, EMA, right? That's the 50 EMA on the weekly. I don't know what to tell you on that one. It's kind of no man's land. I just, you know, this would be an uh, intraday scalp sort of thing. So AMD has weakened against Intel. There's really no, I mean, risk reward, right? It, this holds and it bounces, but I, I, I yeah. I'm in Intel, I don't want to do that. Lamb, I love where Lamb, it, it, it actually is one of the strongest because it actually didn't even get down here. I think it's going to bounce. I actually added to my LRC X trades, Delta wise, lower down my spreads, ABGO. Okay, this is interesting, right? Let's see if we can start reclaiming here. Double tap, the little pivot on the pivot right here. Triple extension, right? AMAT. This is looking pretty good too, friends. It's a monthly, right? So the reason why I'm going through this is because we were starting to get an, a better look to the semis, right? And obviously because they were taken to the woodshed, you would expect them to be one of the strong to bounce, right? There's clack. Is NVIDIA. Candle. So you can see how steep this pullback was on the on NVIDIA lines, right? But I do want to show you a couple things here. This is XLV. This is what I'm talking about on the monthly, 23.6%. This is actually bullish. We got a double, triple, we got a quadruple pivot on there. It held. The sky did not fall. Let's see what happens with that. So I'm, I added to my XLV, XLK, same narrative. Look at this. So monthly friends, 23.6% FIB. There is a theme going on here. You have this massive pullback, but in a massive rally, right? It's going to be like, you know, make your screen, your hair on fire and your toes curl, right? Let's just see. Let's see what happens here, right? All right, let's get back to the NVIDIA here, for my friend. Right, and maybe a set SMA. I'm ready to pop on whenever. Right, let's do it. Enjoy. Welcome, my friends. All right, guys, what's up? Let me just pop up the screen share here. So, if you guys are new to the chat and have already done so, make sure to click that Discord link that's emailed to you. If you did sign up. Once you guys do come into chat, it's going to look like this. I'll tell you where to go to after, but first areas you go to, as when you do come in, click on that disclaimer section, give it a read, as well as go to the new to chat information section. Scroll to the very top and go from the top down. All right, let's take a look at what we got going on today, guys. Pre-market tickers on watch, a couple different things. Tesla, Adobe, Microsoft, NVIDIA, FFIV, DKNG. So let's take a look at everything here. So Tesla gapping up and simply with the Qs and SPY, mainly with the Qs. Uh, Adobe gapping up and simply with Microsoft. Microsoft earnings beat EPS and revs. Guidance for Q3 on conference call was the reason for the pop. So basically they talked about personal computing revenue going, going to be up, cloud revenue going to be up. And stating interest, income, and expense should be offset, um, or should should offset each other in Q3. I think that was the really re the real reason for the uh, push. Nvidia gapping up is simply with the Qs. Uh, FFIV earnings beat EPS and revs year over year growth, ten percent. Q2 guidance lower, twenty twenty two guidance lowered, gapping down. And then DKNG, Morgan Stanley analyst Thomas Allen upgrades DraftKings from equal weight to overweight with a price target of thirty one dollars. Stocks gapping up off the lows. Let's take a look at these names from a technical standpoint intraday. All right, let's see what we got. So first two we're looking at today, guys, Tesla and Adobe. Let's have a look. All 
All righty. So Tesla, we did fill, I think, believe we filled the uh, extension gap on the daily. Let's take a look. I was looking at 963 yesterday. Yes, we're filled. And we're pretty much into that area. Okay, that's good. So we're reclaiming short-term EMA support on Tesla now. I actually probably just delete this one. Let's change this. Now we're just changing pivots. All right, pivot to the upside today, 952.35. This level is able to hold. We have room for continuation on Tesla into the 980.73. That level breaks. We got room for continuation further towards the uh, 104.43 level on the upside. Unable to hold, we look for a pullback towards 926.64 to 885.97 on the downside. Overall on Tesla, going to be leaning bullish neutral, looking for a continuation push higher today if that pivot point is able to hold. Let's take a look at Adobe here. All right, so Adobe, stock's at about 516 a share. Right into the... Uh, Well, kind of into the EMA resistance, I guess. We'll label all these levels. All righty, let's see here. Oops, it's gonna go lower. I'll get last day's high. All right, let's take a look at the signature today. I know which level I need to delete. Let's get that 508. All righty. So coming off the lows or trying to at least on Adobe, this actually is setting up for a decent reversal in the short term, in my opinion. 513.41 pivot levels able to hold 520.49 to 531.48 will be tested. Unable to hold, we look for a pullback towards the 504.53 to 490.659 uh, on the downside. Overall on Adobe, going to be leaning bullish neutral today, looking for a continuation grind higher. We can get a little bit of move um, to the upside into the FOMC. Then we're going to see what's what after that, of course, because the entire market will move with the FOMC. But for this morning, going to be leading bullish and neutral. And on Tesla, like I said, bullish neutral as well. All right, that's Tesla. That is Adobe. Now right, let's take a look at the next two, Microsoft and NVIDIA. So Microsoft, obviously, big reversal yesterday. We're at about 304 a share, 303.28, I guess, exactly. Let's see where we got room to today. Get that daily, there we go. Let's take a look here. Uh, Microsoft pivot to the upside today. 301.69, this level is able to hold. We got room towards 305.57 to 311.04. Unable to hold, we look for a pullback towards 297.33 to 293.30, sorry, 293.92 on the downside. Overall, Microsoft going to be leaning bullish neutral, looking for a continuation grind higher today. I think that reversal is quite telling, and I think that uh, we're going to see continue to continue to see buyers pop on hop onto this uh, trend. As long as that pivot holds, I think we can grind to the upside, obviously coming off the lows on the daily as well. Let's take a look at NVIDIA here. So NVIDIA yesterday had some really great staying power and relative strength. 230.92 is gonna be the pivot to the upside today, this morning. Uh, this level is able to hold. We got room towards 239.45 to 247.50. Unable to hold. We look for 225.74 uh, on the downside. That level breaks. We can see further continuation lower to 219.59.
Overall on NVIDIA, I'm actually been leaning on a little bit on the bearish neutral side today out the gate, looking for a little bit of a pullback gap fill. And then I think we can get, get a grind higher after that occurs. So that's Microsoft, that is NVIDIA. All right, let's take a look at FFIV and DKNG. Slower than that, right? Let's get these bottom end ranges. Okay, let's take a look at the singer today here. Downside pivot, 193.64. Levels able to be reclaimed in towards 234 to 208.82. Unable to hold, we look for a pullback towards 180.201. And if that level breaks, the next level of support is down at 174.82. So overall on FFIB, going to be leaning on the bearish neutral side today, looking for a continuation grind lower out the gate. Lowered guidance, you know, any sort of pop, I would think that uh, it'd be short-lived. And we'll see continuation lower. That's FFIV. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. I'm sorry, not NVIDIA, sorry. Uh, let's take a look at DKNG, which I've been waiting for this time to move off the lows. Do have a little bit of equity on it. And the investment uh, account off the lows right now. So this is nice to see. The key level to hold right now is going to be 2034. Let's see EMA resistance to the upside. So this is mainly um, EMA res on the upside here, it looks like. Let's take a look at that daily or intraday chart, I should say. Twenty thirty four pivot levels able to hold twenty one fifty one to twenty two eighty five will be tested, unable to hold eighteen ninety three to seventeen fifty four on the downside. Overall on DKNG going to be leaning bullish, looking for a continuation push higher today if that pivot point can hold. I think it's got quite a bit of room to come off the lows. Hasn't really made any sort of bounce yet, and I think that uh, there's some opportunity there if it can hold that uh, pivot point, of course. So we'll see what happens. Let's take a look at the SPY and the FANG. All right, so SPY and the FANG, my friends. Let's take a look. So what do we got going on in the market here? SPY? Let's actually take a look at that daily. I'm just gonna just label these two levels that are right there. Well, let's take a gander at that daily chart real quick. So we were still a little extended yesterday. Full Sharami off the lows. We talked about that. Um, I think, and I said, it was, you know, I think we got a little bit more continuation for FOMC, fill the gap. And that's exactly what we're doing this morning. Now it's going to be interesting to see whether or not we can hold it, push through it or not. So that gap fill area was 440.42. which we're clearly above. That's probably gonna act as the pivot area. Nice parabolic downtrend still intact, I think. Time to find out. I'm gonna say yes. Indeed it is. So we get into that level. Okay, 
this morning. Okay. Okay. So pivot to the upside today, 441.43 we'll use. This level is able to hold. We got room towards 444.79. That level breaks. We can see further continuation towards 447.49. Unable to hold, we look for a pullback to 438.04 to 434.12. Now we do have FOMC today, so it's obviously going to move the market pretty big, I would think. Um, right now, this morning, going to be leading out the gate, probably bullish neutral if the pivot can be reclaimed. If it can, I think we grind higher towards that downtrend test, and then we probably will come in a little bit before FOMC and grind. If we can't get above that pivot point this morning, we're going to pull back to 438s, maybe 434s, and fill that gap. So watch that pivot point. can be super important this morning. Not necessarily sure which way we go. We got to see how well tech holds up, et cetera. But the, uh, you know, obviously Microsoft that's pushing at the moment. If that starts to come in, uh, my guess is, you know, SPY is going to come in, fill that gap. But it should be quite interesting to see how we uh, act out the gate. Let's take a look at Apple. And I'm going to do this as well as I always do, let's link these charts. All right, 162.12, pivot to the upside today. This level is able to hold. We got room towards 164.16 to 165.65. Unable to hold, we look for a pullback to 160 156.68 uh, on the downside overall on Apple. Right now, going to be leaning on the bullish neutral side. Reclaim the uh, pivot point, as well as the EMA support in the short term on the daily first time since this uh, we started pulling back a couple weeks ago. Looks like that's quite bullish. Now it's just a matter of whether or not that can hold up. We'll see. So I'll be leaning on the bullish neutral side on that today. Let's take a look at Amazon. Amazon pivot. So this is extended to the downside. Uh, 28070 pivot level holds 2943 to 2992. Unable to hold 2794 to the 2731 level will be tested. And again, I'll be leaning bullish neutral on this name, looking for a push continuation into the 2900 level this morning. Gap fill that, and then we can see what's what. So it's got a little bit of room to gap fill that area. That's Amazon. Let's take a look at Facebook. Sorry, Facebook, Netflix. Netflix, let's have a look. So obviously Netflix, after their earnings, how many days has it been? Three. And we may start to see a little bit of basing today. I've been watching the short-term hourly downtrend. This is important to keep an eye on. right at the pivot, 377.69. Levels unable to hold, we got room towards 357.99. Able to hold, we can start to bounce to 394.94 to potentially 406.80. And uh, you know, I will be leaning on the bullish neutral side on this name as well today, if the pivot point can be reclaimed. That level's reclaimed, we got the downturn break, pivot obviously reclaimed and we got room for continuation higher. So that's the uh, level I'll be looking for there. All right, let's take a look at Facebook. Screenshot this. Nope. All right, screenshot that. Let's look at Facebook after. So Facebook holding the range on the uh, monthly or trying to hold the range on the monthly to the upside 299.21. That's the key level that needs to hold up. Not the pivot to the upside today though, but that is just a key level that we need to be aware of. 30808 pivot upside today. The sub was able to hold. We got room for continuation towards the 317.48. Unable to hold 299.21 to 288.30 will be tested on the downside. Overall on Facebook, gonna be leading on the bullish 
neutral side today, looking for a continuation push higher if that pivot point can hold. That's going to be the key level there. Let's take a look at Google. All right. 25.89. 62. Pivot to the upside today. The sole is able to hold. We're going to look for continuation towards 26.19 to 26.64. Unable to hold 25.46 to 24.89 will be tested on the downside overall on Google. Going to be leaning on the bullish neutral side today, looking for a continuation push higher if that pivot point can hold. But I do think we look good for continuation. It's just a matter of pivot point holding for that next leg up. Gap fill on the uh, daily needs to be obviously filled as well, as we can see there. So that's Google. All right, let's take a look at the, the VIX, the Qs, and the IWM. All right, so the VIX, let's have a look here. So the VIX did gap fill yesterday. It was extended for quite some time. Obviously, we got to watch what happens with FOMC today, but uh, let's take a look at a couple of different levels. Pivot to the upside today is going to be 28.79. This level is able to hold. We got room back towards 30 bucks. That level breaks 32.55. Unable to hold 27.37 to 25.80 on the downside will be tested. So we'll keep an eye on that uh, pivot point. It should give us a decent direction on the SPY as well. Not leaning in any particular direction, just using the VIX for direction on the market as usual. So the levels to pay attention to uh, there. That is the VIX. All right, let's take a look at the cues. QQQ. So a little extended to the um, downside here still. or was yesterday, that gap is now filled with this gap up this morning. That's notable, of course. That pivot is 350.50, this level is able to hold to get room towards 355.25 to the 358.55 area on the upside. Unable to hold, we look for a pullback towards 346.38. That level breaks, we got room for continuation lower into the 341.33 on the downside. Overall, gonna be leaning on the Bullish neutral side out the gate this morning, looking for a little bit more of a grind higher. If the pivot point can hold, if it can't, we'll probably fill the gap. And then I think what will happen is you will see, uh, you know, basing before FOMC as we usually do. That's the cues. Let's take a look at IWM. So IWM gap filled yesterday above the 272 EMA short-term support. That's good. So nice little reclaim of support there. I think this does have some potential for a bounce. Pivot upside today is going to be 201.03. This level is unable to hold. 197.50 will be tested on the downside. That level breaks. We see further continuation towards 195.20. Able to hold, we look for a push towards 203. On the upside to 204.76. And if that level breaks, then we'd be looking at around 207.61, which is the 13 on the daily. Right there. Overall, going to be leading bullish on the name today, looking for continuation higher.
first we got to see that pivot point hold and everything like that but it does look good for a uh continued pop if we can hold that pivot support as well as that ema support on the daily of course right all right since we got a little bit of time guys we might as well go through some bitcoin it's been a couple of days since i've looked at it so on a bigger picture well i look at it every night but with you guys i should say we're almost at the gap flare oh we're, we filled it okay so we filled that extension gap Alrighty. So key level to be the hold above is 37, six, 37,635, which we're above right now. We can hold that 3829. This could be your next big resistance, then 39,456. Looks like we're trying to come off the lows. EMA support that hold of 37,635 is going to be the big key. That level continues to hold. We can continue to bounce. Did put up a nice inverted head and shoulders on the weekly. It broke above that bear flag, bear flag range to the upside, which is a bullish squeeze pattern. So I do think we can see continuation higher if these levels hold. So it's worth keeping an eye on uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin related names in the short term for continuation higher. Of course, it's been trading in sympathy with the market a little bit. So pay attention to what the market does as, as well, obviously on FOMC. All right, let's take a look at Ethereum as well. I think it's elx.im. Yeah, that's what I have on mine. Yeah. So Ethereum daily. Break that uptrend. Looks like a high PE name, eh? South Beach has been talking about how these things are trading like them, and they are absolutely. And it makes sense. Quite a bit of support on Ethereum here. But uh, pivot to the downside right now, 24.65. Levels able to hold, 25.43, 26.35 upside. Unable to hold, 23.13 to 21.93. Was extended to the downside, filled that gap yesterday. Right now we are um, holding decently. I think we're above the short-term EMA support. Let me just take a look. I'm just gonna screenshot this though first. Yeah, we are. We're above short term EMA support, so we can continue to bounce there, it looks like. Anywho, so that's the spot. That's the fang. Those are the individual names that we're looking at today, guys. Going to go ahead, pass over to for a little bit while I type up the pre-market action plan, and then we'll uh, reconnect then and go back over everything and do a quick little recap. Salt Beach, if you're ready, it's all yours. Okay, good morning, guys. Um, okay, fun day. Let's see what we got. We got the Fed on tap. That's the big thing going on. Um, just for FYI, I wouldn't be surprised if the market doesn't open on time today, guys. Um, no New York Stock Exchange quotes are coming through on the majority of institutional platforms. So I don't know what's going to be, but there's an issue. So we'll see. We'll see if they open on time. Um, uh, so we'll see. Anyway. Getting back to what we have at hand. All right, so the 10 years unchanged, 178, five years, 157, 21, um, uh, 0 0.21 separating the two. If the Fed were to get aggressive, which we'll see, uh, I doubt, but we'll see, um, that curve could easily invert and that would, all hell would break loose if that happened. And when I say all hell would break loose, people would be really nervous about uh, the Fed putting us into a recession, of course, that's what it would signal. And people would be kind of, they would definitely sell stocks on that. 
for sure. Okay, so looking overseas, we have the 10 year up 0.027 in London, trading right around highs. We're trading right around highs too, a little bit lower, but you know, we're staying at elevated levels and I would expect that to continue. Um, and I think we'll, you know, ratchet a little bit higher for sure. Okay, the 10 year bond is still negative in Germany, up a little bit there. So basically a synopsis would be rates are up across the board, the yield curve is flat across the board and people are on the seat, you know, edge of their chairs waiting to see what Powell has to say. Okay, that's the bond market. All right, let's look at uh, commodities. So oil up again, stocks not commensurate with the move yesterday, had an amazing day being long oils yesterday. I told you guys I was pedal to the metal early on and kept it pretty much all day. And I came into the day only with the rig calls, which I told you, okay? So oil up again, natural gas is up again, um, but way off the highs and kind of in the lower end of the recent trading range, which is comforting. Um, we'll see what happens in, uh, with Russia and stuff like that. Maybe that would change things, but for now, this is what we got. All right, copper trading at the higher end of its trading range, but again, not too terrible, staying in check. Um, gold is down a little bit. Agricultural commodities kind of flattish today, um, but still, these prices like coffee, like sugar, you know, they are really elevated. Okay, and there you have your inflation problem. Okay, so that's not changing so far. All right, the currency market, the dollar, the dollar been garbage. It's down against North America and it's up against a little against the Japanese and it's down again to another new low against the Chinese currency. Not a healthy situation and Europe is even worse than us. They're at 112 against the dollar, okay? And the weak dollar doesn't bode well for inflation, guys, okay? Because you're, if you're importing a lot of stuff against a currency that's improving, albeit China, that doesn't help your situation one bit, okay? So crypto today is up, what? You got Bitcoin, 3.5%. You got Ethereum, 7%. You got Solana, 5%. These things have gotten, um, you know, pretty smoked. And, um, you know, they're going to trade with high, high PE tech, in my opinion. That's what the market's telling us. Will they decouple? Maybe. Um, but for now, that's what you got, okay? Pretty much lockstep is what I see. All right, and that's that. And let's look at the foreign markets, uh, see what we have there. Okay, we have the FTSE up 2%. We have DAX up 2.5%. Asia... Nikkei was down a little bit, half a percent. China was up a little bit, half a percent. Hong Kong was pretty flat. Okay, so that's that. So you got Banks Fed, you got um, you got Powell today. Let me give you Rick Reader's view because he's been more right than anybody that I'm aware of. And let's see what he's saying. Okay, um, he says that you know the 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 basic. Um, movement has been that people are thinking the Fed's going to get more aggressive. You know, they're talking uh, four rate hikes, north of four rate hikes. Some are saying five, six, seven. Um, Jamie Dimon thought it could be, you know, upwards of that number possibly. So the consensus it keeps moving a little bit in uh, north of uh, what it was earlier in the year. You know, First, they were nothing until 23. Now they do then three this year, then four. He thinks that uh, then they, they might not even get to four. Probably three is his number. So he thinks the Fed needs to go to neutral and then be data dependent. He doesn't think there's hysteria set in that they have to get crazy. So what he sees is the end of QE and you know the first rate hike in March, which is pretty much right now the consensus um, so we'll see. Um, he says the economy is slowing a little bit, um, but nominal GDP is still 7%, but moderating. And he thinks um, that the um, snafu with supply chain will ease in the second half. That should help inflation somewhat. And I'll tell you something else, the wealth effect is gonna help. The people see their statements in the end of January. I think that puts a little crimp on spending as well. Um, 
I don't th he doesn't think the Fed will say they need to break the economy. OK, he just he thinks he'll be a, a lot more pragmatic and um, say, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to stop the QE in March and we'll probably, you know, or sooner. And then we'll put our, our first rate hike in whenever March, let's say. And um, he'll be data dependent after that. I think that, you know, look, Reader's been really right. And I think he makes a lot of sense. And based upon what we've seen from Powell, I think that makes sense. He is not a, you know, fly by the seat of his pants kind of guy. He seems like a lot more pragmatic. And that's what I think he'll say. How the market interprets it, you never know. Okay. Um, we'll see. Okay. So uh, let's see what he says. If he says the second half of the year um, will be better for equities. He's not um, that, you know, uh, comfortable with the near term in equities and he thinks we end the year higher. All right. Um, earnings will be good enough for a good year in stocks and just be careful for the next few months. So that's his synopsis. And I think that is a pretty, um, you know, well thought out uh, argument that he's making. And, you know, what I'm seeing here is like, you know, in a typical bear phase of the market, you get these situations where the market, you know, basically has a movement down. You can see the charts. They look kind of crummy. And then you get these rip your face off rallies. OK, that. Um, that change, you know, people, you know, who, the guys that are short get their face ripped off and people say, oh, is this the end? And they get along again and then they continue down. That's typically what happens in a bear phase. Um, I do think it's just a bear phase. I don't think we're in a bear market. And um, that's how I see it. If I look at the charts, they look really crummy to me. Um, you know, everything's rolling over. Uh, the worst of the lot is the Russell. That looks really terrible. The Qs don't look much better. The spies look kind of crummy. The transports all, all rolling over, okay? Um, I don't think after a two year up move or year and a half up move, that three weeks is the end of this, but we'll see, okay? That's my opinion. So you got your rip your face off rally this morning. Um, if you came in flat like I did, I have a few longs, you know, the ones I have, I bought win. I have this, uh, the rig, I have a few other things, um, but I'm pretty light. I have no shorts. I have been coming in, like I tell you guys, pretty flat because I think there's huge opportunities um, during the day. And I don't think you need to be involved in the market overnight unless you have a really strong opinion in something like I kind of sort of have in win right now. All right. Otherwise, I think, you know, you're better off trading the tape. You can make a, a boatload of money. And I always tell you guys, I never want to have to play defense. So had I come in short, I'd have to play defense and it would ruin my day. Now I, I come in fresh. Um, how am I going to play this market? You know, I, I'm not buying the opening, that's for sure. I'll look for spots. I'll probably sit on my hands for the first 15, 20 minutes because that's been paying me to do that. And um, I'm going to continue to do that because it's worked. And when something works, I'll keep doing it until it stops working. So that's that. Um, what else? Goldman and Citibank thinks it's time to buy dips in stocks. Okay, fine. Good for them. Um, what else? We got banks fed China. Nothing came out of China that I saw that was particularly interesting. Except I saw we one of our stealth jets is in the South China Sea and there's a race to get it between us and China. But that was interesting. Crypto we discussed. Oil market. Look, this is supply demand issue with oil. Um, and I think in the Additionally, you have this uh, question mark, what's going to happen with Russia and the, uh, and the Ukraine, and that's causing prices to spike even further. And I capitalized on that yesterday, and that's what's happening with oil. The virus, I think, is improving. Mr. Mark, dollar, we discussed, it stinks. And Mr. Market, so yesterday we had big oil, e &P, banks on the long side. We had EV, you know, uh, High beta, EV, solar, China, consumer non-durables, high PE tech, FANG, HMOs, hospitals, retail, cyclicals, and semis on the negative side. Okay, so a lot more on the negative side. Um, one noteworthy thing, you know, when earnings come out, it seems as though the street is long big time for like 
eight in a row, okay? Um, you know, American Express traded lower, it went way higher. IBM was unchanged, it went way higher. J and J, same thing. Microsoft, you saw what happened there. Amazon, you know, the collateral damage, you saw what happened with that one. Um, so, you know, don't don't react to that first move with the crowd. You know, be pragmatic. Um, what else do we have? Numbers wise, good numbers in Glassworks, LRN, RES, Texan. Microsoft and the letter T. We had positive news in Mattel and JKS. Um, HOOD is taking steps to avoid trading restrictions. So that's a positive there. Um, hold on a second. Okay, so that's on the positive. On the negative, we have FFAV, FFIV, I should say, Kimberly Clark. Um, it's hard um, without these quotes, but anyway, a Boeing seemed eh, but that stock is starting to trade up here. Let me see if the quotes are back. Hold on. Yep, okay. Quotes are back for New York Stock Exchange stocks. So everything should now open the way it should. Okay, that's good. Um, what else? Negative. That's about it. Okay, CNI was crappy. Um, let's see. You saw Hasbro News. Um, they lost that Disney contract. Their loss is Mattel's gain. You saw that. Um, yes, I think so. In UNG, Eddie. Um, what else? Good, good, good. You saw Biden is threatening Putin personally that he's going to do, you know, I guess. Um, something about where his money is and kind of press his pants on that one. We'll see. I don't think he is one to take kindly to threats, but we'll see, okay? After the close, we have numbers in EW, Intel, LRCX, LVS, Levi's, Styx, Now, Teradyne, Tesla, URI, VRTX, and Xilinx. Tesla's the big dog. And tomorrow, prior to the opening, we have Alaska, MO, Altria, um, Comcast, uh, MasterCard, McDonald's, MSCI, Nucor, SAP, Love, uh, T Row, Tractor Supply, Valero, HCA, Dow, Danaher. That'll be interesting if the PPG missed. These are the next cyclicals to report. We'll see how they do. I think that's interesting. The Sandra Link, uh, whatever her name is, Link, Stephanie Link, she's on TV from time to time. And she said something that I've been saying to you guys, and I just want to talk about it one more time. She was getting out of like LRCX. And they asked her why. And she said she thinks companies are double ordering semiconductors, which is what I said. They've gone, you know, remember I've talked about the fact that they were doing this just in time inventory for a long time and they all got caught without semis and they couldn't do supply, you know, the supply chain got real screwed up for them and they had no semis. And, and she's saying that guys are double ordering now and moving away from that so that they don't have a supply problem again. And that's causing the semiconductor stocks to um, show, you know, a, a big revenue growth. When in fact, as soon as they get to the level they need to get to, they're going to see the revenues fall off sharply. So I thought that was an interesting point, something that I think is going on. And if I was a CEO of a company, I would be double ordering, for sure. Okay, so. I wouldn't want to get caught with my pants down again. And if I did, shame on me, okay? So that's that. Um, let's see, inside of buying, you had Baker Brothers buy this KOD, stock's been a dog, and it was, someone talked about it today negatively. They reduced their target, let me see who that was. But these biotech stocks are like, huh, boy, talk about garbage. Target goes from 114 to 70 from, who is this? Citibank keeps them neutral. I mean, these guys don't know squat, but anyway, that's that. Um, what is Kathy doing? Who really cares, but whatever. I go over it every day, so I'm always continue to do it. Uh, she bought DNA, a million shares. She keeps buying it, it keeps going lower. And she sold Edit, which she owns much, much higher, okay? The research world, you saw the upgrade DraftKings from Morgan Stanley, Target 31, New York, big opportunity, they're saying. 
Also, Penn Gaming was upgraded to outperform, reduced the target from 80 to 70, stocks 43. That was at Macaray. They also like Path over there. Um, Citibank um, buys semiconductor equipment, the exact opposite of what Stephanie Link is saying. I think we'll see what happens. Let's, you know, they have gotten smoked a little bit, so they can bounce for sure. Um, what else was here? Plug, Susquehanna likes that. Win, CBRE, I didn't know they even had research, but they take the target from 120 to 125. You know, it's going to take a long time for that casino to be built. It's, it, it, it appears as though it will be a casino. Um, but I think the UAE is going to be, you know, a real, it, it'll be, you know, the Macau of the Middle East and probably Macau on steroids, if I'm guessing, because you don't have the Chinese government calling the shots. So, you know, that place is just like booming. Uh, what else? Let's see. Beyond reiterate the sell. No matter what the stock does, no matter what their alliances are, it seems like it's an out on stock. So that's that. Uh, Nelson neutral to sell at Goldman. GATO outperformed to sell at RBC. Anything on the plus side? You know, guys are up in their target in Microsoft. That's that's and a lot of guys reiterating their buy but lowering targets significantly. Par 110 to 60, square 320 to 230. We've been discussing this 345 to 270 in PayPal. So big drops in targets, but reiterating the buy. So I'm wrong. You know, that's how it goes. And I'm reducing the target sometimes in half of what they were. Okay. J and J guys positive, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that. Um, so, uh, syndicate is one uh, secondary and um, three slated for the rest of the week, one IPO. So this lack of supply in the syndicate um, calendar is helping equities. Okay. As long as the supply stays low, you know, let the market do what it's going to do. Let it find the bottom, whatever, wherever it is, and however long it takes to get there. And, um, you know, stocks will rebound. Okay. It's not like the world's coming to an end here. All right. But I do think, um, you know, this is typical of a bull market, this gap up. And if you're short, oh my God moment. Okay. I'm screwed. So we've seen that before. Um, did I miss anything? No. So I'm, oh, group rotation. I think the opening stocks will be the best place to be. Airlines, hotels, banks, oils, miners, gambling, um, cyclical stocks, and on the negative side, maybe, uh, you know, some of these, uh, I don't know, on the negative side, consumer non-durables, maybe, um, drug stocks, maybe, those kind of things, okay? All right, I'm out of time. That's it for me. I'm probably going to be very quiet in the first half hour for sure. See how it trades. I'm probably going to wait till the Fed to really get active. And uh, that's it. It's all yours, Barton. All right, thank you, South Beach guests. What's going on, morning? Let me take a look at, uh, let me just well, pop the, uh, there we go. Pop that stuff back up. Anywho, guys, if you guys are new to chat and have already done so, make sure to click that Discord link that is emailed to you. Once you guys do come in the chat, click on the disclaimer section as well as the new to chat information section. Give it a read from top to bottom. We'll go over that in a little bit once we close down the YouTube stream. Pre-market tickers on watch. Everything's posted. I'll scroll up slowly so you can see it. That, that, that. You know what I didn't post? All the other uh, spine the fang. One sec, guys. My mistake. I'll post all those right now. But all the charts are posted, or will be in a second here. There we go. So everything's posted now. And then obviously options section, you can see the options um, spreadsheet there, all the levels, et cetera. All right, let's take a look at what we got going on today, guys. Pre-market tickers on watch, a couple of different things that we're looking at. Tesla, Adobe, Microsoft, NVIDIA, FF5E, and DKNG. Tesla gapping up in sympathy with the QSPY, Adobe gapping up in sympathy with Microsoft, Microsoft earnings beat, EPS and revs guidance on for Q3 uh, conference call. They talked about that basically uh, positive gapping up. 
NVIDIA gapping up in sympathy with the queues and uh, SPY, FFIV, earnings beat EPS and revs, year-over-year growth 10%, Q2 guidance lowered, 2022 guidance lowered, stocks gapping down, and then DKNG, Morgan Stanley analyst, upgrades DraftKings to e from equal eight to overweight with a $31 price target. Let's take a look at these names from a technical perspective today. So first two that we're looking at today, guys, are Tesla and Adobe. All right, so Tesla, Adobe, let's have a look. So Tesla obviously gapping up. Pivot to the upside today, 952.35 levels able to hold 980.73. Then uh, 1,000 will be tested. Unable to hold 926.64 to 885.97 on the downside. Overall on Tesla, leaning bullish neutral. Looking for a continuation push higher today if the pivot can hold Adobe. Pivot upside today is going to be the 513.41 level holds, 520.49 to 531.48 will be tested. Unable to hold 504.53 to 496.59 on the downside. Overall on Adobe, leaning bullish neutral. Looking for a continuation higher if that pivot point can hold. Let's take a look at Microsoft. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. Microsoft 301.69 pivot level holds, 305.57 to 311.04. Unable to hold 297.33 to 293.92. On the downside will be tested overall on Microsoft leaning bullish, looking for a continuation push higher today. If that pivot point can hold NVIDIA. Pivot to the upside is going to be the 23092 spot. Level holds 23945 to 24750 will be tested. Unable to hold 22574 to 21959 on the downside. Overall on NVIDIA, leaning bullish neutral, looking for a continuation push higher. If that pivot point, sorry, leaning bearish neutral, if the pivot point's unable to hold. We'll see what happens there. Let's take a look at. FFIV, let's take a look at DKNG. FFIV, 193.64 pivot, levels able to hold 234 to 208.82. Unable to hold 182.01 to 174.82 will be tested on the downside. Overall on FFIV, leaning bearish neutral. DKNG, 2034 pivot, level holds 2151 to 2285 will be tested. Unable to hold 1893 to 1754 on the downside. Overall on DKNG, going to be leaning on the bullish neutral side today, looking for a continuation push higher. Let's take a look at the SPY and the FANG. SPY, let's take a look at what we got going on here. Market 441.43 pivot, levels able to hold. And actually, we should take so SPY 441.43 pivot to the upside today. This level hold, this level reclaims, I should say. Room higher into the 444.79 resistance breaks. We see the 447.49 tested. Pivot unable to hold. Room lower into the 438.04 support breaks. We see the 434.12 tested. And that's going to be leaning on the bullish neutral side if pivot can reclaim. If you can't reclaim, guys, we'll come in, we'll fill the gap most likely this morning, I've been thinking, or before the FOMC, get close to it or actually fill it. So I think it's a pretty uh, big level to be watching. Let's take a look at Apple. Apple pivot to the upside today is going to be the uh, 162.12 level levels able to hold 164.16 to 165.65, unable to hold 160.08 to 158.68 on the downside will be tested. Overall on Apple, any bullish neutral looking for a continuation push higher today if the pivot can hold. Amazon pivot upside today is going to be 28.70 level holds, 29.43 to 29.92, unable to hold 27.94 to 27.31. Leaning bullish neutral if the pivot can hold this morning looking for a continuation grind higher. Netflix pivot upside today is going to be 277.69. Pivot is reclaimed, room towards 394. Sorry, 377.69 level reclaimed, 394.94 to 406.80. Unable to hold 357.89. He is obviously reclaiming that pivot point. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to pull back here, guys. That's a downturn on the daily and obviously resistance level on the, on the daily to the upside. Let's take a look at Facebook. Pivot upside is going to be the... 30808 level holds 31748 unable to hold 29921 to the 28830 on the downside will be tested 
Overall on Facebook, leaning bullish neutral if that pivot point is able to be reclaimed. Let's take a look at Google. Pivot on the upside today is going to be the uh, 2589 level holds. 2619 to 2664 will be tested. Unable to hold 2546 to 2489 on the downside. Overall on Google, leaning bullish neutral, looking for a gap fill on the daily for continuation higher on the upside. VIX pivot upside is going to be the 2879 spot levels, unable to hold, towards 2737 to 2589, able to hold 30 to 3255 on the upside will be tested. Watch that uh, pivot point this morning, guys. It's going to be super important for direction on the actual SPY itself. Let's take a look at the Qs. Obviously, big gap up there. QQQ, pivot 350.50, level holds, 355.25 will be tested at 358.55. Unable to hold, we look for a pullback into the 346.38 to 341.33 on the downside. Overall on QQQ is going to be leading bullish neutral. Looking for a continuation push higher if the pivot can hold. And last but not least, guys, IWM pivot upside is going to be the 20103 level holds. 203 to 20476 will be tested. I need to hold 197.50 and 195.20 on the downside will be the next level. And, you know, sleeting the same way. Bullish neutral if pivot can be reclaimed. So that's the spots of Fang. Those are the individual names that we're looking at today, guys. We'll, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in regards to the market. I think it's going to be a, quite an interesting day. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens.